Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Matsi Donchinga. I'm a librarian at Lusaka Apex Medical University. And I have a BSc in Library Information Science and recently graduated with a master's from UNSA in Library Information Science. So my presentation, this is the title of my presentation. That's Research Visibility in Zambia, uh, Data Mining of Author Publications from Google Scholar and Institutional Repositories in the higher education institutions in Zambia. This is the order of presentation that I'm going to adopt. Okay, so background, uh, the higher education institutions are essential for academic research in Zambia. However, despite the research that is being conducted by students and academic staff, uh, the resulting output faces challenges, that's in terms of visibility and uptake. So an institutional repository is simply a database with a set of services that is used to capture, store, index, and preserve uh, university scholar research in digital formats. So while there has been an increase in the number of registered higher education institutions and corresponding enrollment rates of postgraduate students, the online visibility of scholar research output is still noticeably low. This is according to period 2018. I think this is in the presentation that Dr. Piri has just made. So the expectation is that when, an, when a higher education institution deploys an IR, more and more people are going to be using it, more and more people are going to be using it over time. So the annual trend and uptake of the IR is expected to increase over time. However, this is not the case in the higher education institutions in Zambia. A statement of the problem, uh, Zambia has seen a steady increase in the number of higher education institutions uh, however, while there has been an increase in the number of registered higher education institutions, the online visibility is still noticeably low. A common challenge encountered in higher education institutions is the sig significant gap between the research that is being con conducted by academic staff and the representation of this work in IRS compared to the publications that are available on Google Scholar. So mostly when you go to Google Scholar for institutions like UNSA, even Apex, when you search for academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles on Google Scholar, you find that the number of publications and the academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles are high. But when you look at the, when you search the IR, the number of publications that have been archived in the IR, you find that the, the, the numbers are relatively low. Okay. So these studies suggest that higher education institutions in Zambia face challenges in terms of research output and online visibility. And there's need for more research to understand the extent of this problem. It is in the light of this gap that this study aims to identify effective approaches for improving the uptake of IR content in the higher education institutions. Uh, the main objective of the study was to identify effective approaches for improving the uptake of IR content in the higher education institutions. Then the following were the specific objectives. One, to determine the uptake of scholarly resource output in IRs. Two, to identify effective techniques for depositing legacy content. And three, to determine techniques that will ensure the effective use of self-archiving approaches. And the following are the research questions that were used in this study. So significance of the study, it is anticipated that the findings of the study may contribute to the following. Uh, it will equally identify the effective approaches and techniques that will ensure the effective use of self-archiving, thereby improving the uptake of IR content in the IRs. In the same vein, once the uptake of IR content is increased, the online visibility of scholarly research output in the high education institutions will increase. It will, it will further have a positive effect on the international recognition, not only as higher education institutions, but as a country at large. This is worth noting that uh, when rating institutions, research plays a major role in the rating of higher education institutions. And if publications are not made available online, this affects the rating of institutions in Zambia. In terms of the theoretical framework that was used in this study, this was the division of innovation uh, theory. Okay, the following is part of the literature that was reviewed. This is available in the main document, so I'll go directly to the methodology. 
So this study used the mixed method, and for the first objective, the target population were the 11 higher education institutions that had functional high hours. So the number of uh, higher education institutions in Zambia, but at the time of this study, only 11 had functional institutional posters. And these include the University of Zambia, Lusaka Apex Medical University, Cavendish University, Chalimbana University, Copper Belt University, Kwame Nkrumah University, Mulungush University, University of Lusaka, Zikas University, and Information and Communication University, and Texel American University. In terms of sampling, purposive sampling was used to select academic members of staff or researchers with Google Scholar profiles. So for this, uh, for this study, mainly our target was academic members of, study, of staff that have Google Scholar profiles because we're interested in we're interested in finding out the, in finding the publications that they have on Google Scholar against those that have been ingested in the institutional poster. In the following steps were used to extract publications from Google Scholar and IRS. So the researcher used Google Scholar to search for researchers that have Google Scholar profiles. For instance, with UNSA, the researcher searched for profiles that are matching the University of Zambia. Then the researcher then extracted publications associated with each author, matching the institution with pub, publish or perish. Just to give an example, for instance, when you go to Google Scholar, and you type in the University of Zambia profile. So you search for profiles. University of Zambia profiles, this will, will, will provide a, li a list of academic members of staff from UNSA that have uh, Google Scholar profiles. And once you open these profiles, you highlight the name of the author. So this was done for all the authors. For example, also all the authors, all the academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles, their publications were extracted using Publish or Perish. So once you go to Publish or Perish, you just replace the name with the name of the author. You paste it and search. Okay, this seems to be taking long. Let me try another name. Okay, I'll try Afakangelo. This is one of the academic members of staff from our department, Library Information Center. So if we get the details for Professor Aka and paste them in publish or perish, this will be able to highlight all the publications that he has archived on Google Scholar. It also highlights the number of citations in the H index. Once this is done, these results are saved using, you save them as CSV. So this is the procedure that anyone can do in higher education institutions, preferably even for librarians as we're trying to find uh, publications for our members of staff in the higher education institutions. We can use this method to extract these publications. Okay, so for, for extracting publications from Google Scholar, we use Publish or Perish, and that gave us a list of all the academic members of staff with the number of their publications that have been archived on Google Scholar. Uh, simultaneously, the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvest was used to extract publications from IRS alongside Octopus. Uh, so it's worth noting that uh, in the higher education institutions, currently at the time of this study, it was only the University of Zambia that had activated the Open Archives Initiative protocol. So meaning for these other institutions that had not activated this protocol, we used Octopus to extract these, these publications. Okay, so then in terms of institutional repository uptake, 
The uptake of the Scholar resource output was computed by comparing the number of publications in Google Scholar profiles against what was on the IR. This is because many researchers and academic members of staff who neglect to upload content to the IRS, but it turns out that quite a number of them will upload content to these publicly accessible academic databases. For instance, it is fairly common to have academics or researchers upload their publications on academia.edu, ResearchGate, PubMed Central, or Google Scholar, as opposed to uploading on the IR. It is for this reason that this study opted to use Google Scholar as part of the comparison of academic members of staff with Google Scholar profiles. Uh, in terms of data analysis, the collected data was analyzed by creating a spreadsheet for each sampled academic members of, member of staff with a comprehensive list of their publications. So in data, in data analysis, mainly we were interested in finding out for author A, for instance, Professor Akakandelo. How many publications does he have archived on his Google Scholar profile? Again, it's how many of those publications have been entered in the UNSA institutional repository? And we did this for all the academic members of staff in the higher education institutions that were sampled. And for the second and third objectives, the research targeted, uh, targeted academic members of staff who publish at higher education institutions and those that have Google Scholar profiles that have been identified under the first objective. So the research also um, targeted assistant dean's research or persons who are charged with the responsibility of compiling quarterly reports and librarians who are charged with the responsibility of managing the interest was to find out what happens uh, when they're preparing those quarterly reports. We, we understand that uh, as a component, it includes the research that has been done, that academic members have done. And we're interested to find out are those, uh, is that research submitted to the library or is that research ensured that it has been entered into the IR? For the librarians who are interested with the librarians that are responsible for managing the IR, because from them we just wanted to know what what initiatives have they done? Are, are they reaching out to academic members of staff? Uh, are they marketing the institutional repository to the academic members of staff? How do they go about it, ensuring that academic members of staff are aware about their role in submitting publications to the IR? and uh, the, proce the processes which they can follow to ensure that these publications are submitted to the IR. So this is a sample size, 20 assisted this research or persons responsible for the research, 20 academic members of staff and 10 librarians who are responsible for uploading content. In terms of the sampling technique for the second objective, we also use the positive sampling to select ac academic members of staff who publish and have Google Scholar profiles. Simple random sampling was also used to select academic members of staff who had significant differences between what they uploaded on Google Scholar against what was ingested on the IR, based on their availability at the time of the interview. So, like I explained earlier, a list from every institution of academic members of staff that have Google Scholar profiles was created, but at the time of the interviews, were interested in those academic members of staff that have a significant difference in terms of their publications on Google Scholar against their publications on the IR. For instance, we'd find that uh, one academic member of, member of staff has maybe 70 publications on his Google Scholar profile. When we check that against the IR, we find that maybe they only have five archived on the IR. And these are the members of staff that were interested in interviewing because we wanted to find out why do we have this huge margin. Are they aware about the institutional repository? Are they aware about their role to submit publications to the institutional repository? In terms of the limitations of the study, so the study was focused on IRs in higher education institutions. Therefore, the information collected in the study was exclusive to the selected number of institutions that were part of the study. The recommendations were only to be generalized 
to higher education such as similar settings and conditions to those of the selected higher education institutions. The matching of publications uses titles and dates, potentially missing out on titles entered in different formats in IR. This was a, one of the limitations that was encountered during the data matching. You find that if there's a difference in terms of how the title has been entered on Google Scholar, and there's a different, it has been entered differently on the IR, these problems would, uh, would occur. Then the other challenge that academic staff and researchers without Google Scholar profiles were left out. Some high education institutions had only recently set up IRS and the extraction of author details on Google Scholar only focuses on authors that have explicitly used that high education institution in question. And authors with affiliations linked to places where they did their postgraduate students were automatically excluded. This is an example of where maybe a member of staff works at Apex but did their postgraduate student at UNSA. It means that those uh, post, those publications which they did while they were at UNSA, they are affili affiliated to UNSA instead of APEX. In terms of research findings and uh, discussions, so this table highlights the ancient repository content status in high education in high education institutions in Zambia. So this is staff complement versus Google Scholar profiles. I'll give an example of the first, uh, the first one for Onza. In in re in red, it represents the number of academic members of staff, which is, which at the point of collecting this data was 800. Then in red, it represents the number of Google Scholar profiles, and that's the same for Zika, Sumangushi, Chalambana University, Lamu, Kwame Kuruma, CBU. Texas American University, UNLAS, ICU, and Cavendish University. So this table how is through this table we're able to see some institutions have like CBU. You find that there are a number of members of staff that are there are a lot of members, academic members of staff, uh, unlike the number of those that have Google Scholar profiles. Uh, the second graph uh, it outlines the publications were extracted from eight uh, high education institutions, as shown in the figure below. Publications were not extracted from three high education institutions. That is because at the time of data collection, these IRs were not functional. That's for Copper Dodge University, Kwame Nkrumah University, and Texas American University. So this table highlights for those uh, publications, for those institutions that whose IRs were functional at the time. Giving an example of UNSA, uh, green represents the number of publications that are available for the members of staff on Google Scholar, while blue represents the number of publications that are available in the IR. Yellow represents the number of publications that are not in the IR. This on its own highlights the difference. There is a huge disparity between the number of publications that are available on Google Scholar against those that have been entered on the IR. We have a huge margin of uh, publications that are missing. And this affects these uh, higher education institutions in terms of visibility of both the authors and the institution at large. So at author level, this affects the H index and visibility of the author. In some institutions like UNSA, where uh, the H index or rather publications are considered at the time of uh, promotion. So this affects uh, the HR index. This is not only the case of UNSA, it's evident from these other universities, universities in the higher education institution, that most of them, there's a huge disparity between the number of publications that have been entered in Google Scholar against those that have been entered in the IR. It shows that uh, only few publications are available in these higher education institutions, institutional repositories. In terms of the annual trend of the uh, IRs in higher education institutions, these have shown fluctuating patterns over the years. For instance, at UNSA, the IR uptake exhib exhibited a fluctuating trend starting at 4% in 2010, 
increasing to 8% in 2013 and then gradually decreasing to 6% in 2023, with fluctuations in between. So the blue line highlights the number of publications that are available in the Google Scholar profiles, while the red line highlights the number of publications that have been entered in the institutional postal. So this, on its own, explains the huge difference that exists between the number of publications that are available on the IR against those that have, or the number of publications that are available on Google Scholar against those that have been entered in the IR. This also is proof that uh, academic members of staff are publishing. They now they have published, they have a number of publications on their Google Scholar profile. But these publications are not being submitted to the library or these publications are not being archived in the higher education, in the institution repositories, which still affects the, brings in the issues of visibility of research. Uh, this is the same with Apex. Uh, the blue line shows the number of publications that are available on Google Scholar, while it's the red line shows the number of publications that are available on the institutional repository. So these trends are similar in the high education institutions that we are that we are part of the study. And the study also revealed that IR actually creates are generally low with fluctuating trends over the years. At means that the average IR uptake rate is very low, which is eleven percent. Zika sits at eight seven percent, Unilas is at zero eight percent. Uh, Cavendish University is at 6%, ICU University is at 20%, Wallace Chalimbana University is at 7%, Mulungush University is 4%, and Apex University is at 28% respectively. So these results generally indicate that the IR uptakes are relatively low in the higher education institutions. Uh, this, this table highlights the UNSA institutional repository uptake which shows that uh, the majority of uh, academic members of staff or researchers at UNSA have 0% of their publications in the IR, followed by those that have 10%. So it means that if uh, an academic member of staff has uh, maybe 50 publications on their Google Scholar profile, only 10% of those publications are available in the IR with 80% is minimum. So we only have few academic members of staff that have 80% of their publications in the archived in the IR. Okay, this is the same with Zika University, where we have the majority of the academic members of staff having zero publications on the institutional repository. However, this, these publications are available on the Google Scholar profiles. Uh, in terms of objective two, these were strategies for uploading legacy content. The research findings highlight several strategies that will ensure that old content missing from the IRA is uploaded. These include training and support, automation of the deposit process, incentives for publishing, clear deposit policies and guidelines, marketing and awareness campaigns. So during the data collection, most of the academic... Excuse me. During the data collection, most of the academic members of staff highlighted that uh, some of them were not aware about the IR. Some of them needed training on how to upload the, their contents to the institutional repository. And a number of them also mentioned the issue of incentives for publishing. So demonstrating the impact of the IR on the academic staff will motivate them to submit their publications to the IRs and consider integrating the IR upload with departmental publication journals and research output. So other academic members of staff also indicated that they, they, they do not have the time to personally sit and upload their publications to the IR. So they, they suggested that uh, automating the deposit process if it can be automated the same way that Google Scholar is automated, that it, it uh, mops around and finds these public publications. If the, if the IR was to be automated, it would make their work easier. The academic staff also expressed their willingness to submit soft copies of the missing publications through email and share links to their Google Scholar profiles and journals with their librarians so that this information can be 
can be entered in the in the IR. So in terms of objective three, this was self-archiving strategy. The study found that 58% of libraries had conducted delivery trainings to teach academic members of staff how to use the IR to upload their publications. So different institutions like UNSIA, they said they have scheduled programs for different schools where they teach the academic members of staff on how to self-archive their publications to the IR. However, during the data collection, certain schools like the School of Vets, when we're interviewing them about trying to find out if they, they're aware about the external repository, if they're aware about their their role in submitting publications, they indicated that they were not aware about the they are not aware about the institutional repository. So while the remaining 42% had not conducted such trainings, the majority of 84% said they were unaware of any tools that would aid in self-archiving, while the remaining 11% said they were unsure about any such software or tools. Uh, the remaining 5% suggested that the, uh, the IRI can be connected to Google Scholar, which would facilitate self-archiving. This is in a this is in response to the question which was uh, which wanted to find out from the respondents whether if they are aware about any tools that could be connected so automating the self archiving process, making it making self archiving easier so that members of staff can submit their publications. So the study found that strategies for motivating academic members of staff and researchers to self-archive include offering training, implementing IR policies that mandate academic members of staff to submit their publications, providing publishing incentives to members of staff who publish, automating the deposit process, simplifying the submitting uh, procedure, and appreciating academic members of staff who publish through the IR and streamlining the self-archiving process. Okay, so in conclusion, the fluctuating trends in the IR uptake observed in the data suggest that IR uptake rates have not shown a consistent increase and have varied significantly. Establishing and maintaining functional IRs can enhance the visibility and accessibility of research, ultimately contributing to the reputation and success of academic work in high education institutions. So the research also revealed that some academic staff we are not aware of the IR and their responsibility to submit publications to it, indicating a need for increased awareness and understanding of IRS among academic staff members. The findings collectively underscore the need for further efforts to promote the benefits of IRS and address the concerns of faculty members and researchers that's regarding content archiving and service quality, which may help in archiving a more in achieving a more consistent and decreasing trend in the IR uptake over time. In terms of recommendations, higher education institutions should embrace the highlighted strategies in the study to ensure that the missing publications are captured and ingested in the IRS. Based on the research findings, it is recommended that higher education institutions in Zambia offer training and support to academic members of staff on the IR highlighting the benefits and importance of depositing their publications in the IR. Effective training and support mechanisms are essential for promoting faculty members to use the IR. So this was uh, this was one of the was one of the responses from the respondents during data collection. Many academic members of staff do not submit their publications to the IR simply because they do not know about the IR. They do not know the benefits. They do not understand the benefits of them submitting their publications to the IR. They do not uh, have, most of them highlighted that they have more publications on Google Scholar because they clearly understand the benefits of having their publications to the, uh, on Google Scholar, unlike on the IR. That's why the recommendation of uh, training and support. It is also recommended that the higher education institutions consider automation of the deposit process by integrating the IRRs with other systems, such as publication databases and information management systems, in order to streamline the deposit process. The study is also recommending that the higher education institutions implement the IRR policies, which will guide the academic members of staff and mandate them to submit their publications to the IR. 
the library should collaborate and partner with departmental administrators and editors to streamline the upload process for departmental journals and the internal databases with the IR. And this is the end of the presentation. Thank you.